In today's episode, we will be exploring five things that are what are keys in Flutter, when to use keys, how keys works under the hood, and where to specify keys. What are several different types of keys in Flutter? So what the thing key is in Flutter? What does that key means in the widget constructor? In simple words, key is an object used to uniquely identify a widget in the widget tree. Furthermore, in Flutter, keys are used in different aspects. For example, to preserve the scroll location in the scrollable view such as grid view or list view or any other scrollable view. And keys can be used to preserve states when widget moves around in the widget tree. And the keys are divided into two groups, local keys and global keys. So when do we use keys? Well, keys are used in very specific cases where we want to manage the life cycle of a widget in a collection, such as adding, removing, or reordering widgets of same type that maintain some stat. And keys are essential when we want to preserve the stat of individual widgets during rebuilds or when handling transitions or animations. In this example of a simple to-do app, reordering the to-do based on priority and remove when it's done. The keys here are very important. Here, when the items are reordered, Flutter needs to determine which to-do item widget needs to be updated with the new position. The unique keys of each to-do item widget enables Flutter to recognize that each to-do item has its own identity. Since each to-do item widget has a unique key, Flutter efficiently updates the position of the widgets in the widget tree, maintaining individual stats during rendering. This prevents state loss and ensures that the do item remain their correct state even after reordering. Similarly, when deleting, the unique key associated with the particular to do item helps Flutter identify the correct widget to be removed from the widget tree. Hmm, that's okay, but how keys works under the hood? To understand keys in more depth, we have this very simple application where we have two counts and a swap button. So when the swap button is tapped, it will swap between these two numbers and if you look at the code we have a statful widget the numbers app which constructs two stateless number widgets in the children of the column and here we have the elevated button which is when clicked set to stat and swap the widgets and everything works fine but the magic really starts to happen when we change the stateless number to statful number now if you restart the app and again check the swap button nothing is working and by adding the unique key to the stateful number widgets and then restart the app and this time if we swap this starts working as expected as it was before keep in mind while dealing with the stateless widgets we don't need any kind of keys but we directly deal with the types and perform the necessary updates for swapping now let's go and understand how the rendering process of the widgets is happening under the hood first let's start from where we had the stateless widgets we had a column with two stateless number child widgets and that's not it if you have watched my video of how flutter render widgets you may probably know how flutter builds the corresponding elements for each widget in the widget tree and that tree is called an element tree widgets itself are immutable and are just the configuration that how the ui should look like and the corresponding elements are responsible for keeping all the information about the specific type of the widget and a reference to child elements same as we had in the widget tree and to look up the additional information the elements in the element tree reference to the original widgets in the widget tree when the widget swaps, Flutter Framework checks through the element tree. It starts checking, in our case, the column element and then move to its children. Here, the element tree will call this canUpdate method checking for the type and the keys, and accordingly update the render object to display a new updated result on the UI. In this case, we don't have any keys, so it will ignore the keys. And the widget that is just swapped is of same type. Then it will check same for the second child, and nothing was destroyed and recreated, but just the update happens when the swap button was clicked. So that was the work under the hood when we had stateless number widgets. Now let's see what has happened when we change the stateless number widgets to stateful number widgets. 
Now everything remains the same but in case of stateful widgets we will introduce a pair of stat with each element and this time the number is stored in the stat instead of the widget itself. So when the widget swaps again the can update method was called and the process starts from column to its children and it checks for the tabs and keys and yet we don't have keys again so it doesn't matter in this case also. So it checks first child type is same yes for the second child absolutely the type is same. Same as we had in the previous scenario of stateless widgets. So Flutter framework uses the element tree and the corresponding state to determine what to display on the UI. So in our case, the state remained unchanged and we didn't get any result on the UI when the swap was happened, which means our widgets didn't properly get swapped. This time, if we add unique keys to each stateful widgets and swaps the widgets, again the can updated method knows its job. The process starts. For the parent widget, everything remains the same and for the children, looking for the runtime types, yes, both are the same, but wait, the keys aren't the same. So in that case, what Flutter does is to deactivate the element references and again start checking for the correct match. For the column, again everything remains the same. And for the first child, the widget does not match because this is the one because of which the references were deactivated on swap. Now the Flutter framework will look for the other non-match children for the element with the corresponding key. So yes, it calls the key match and updates its reference to the corresponding key widget. And the same will happen for the other child. So because of keys, when the swap happens, we got what we expected to see on the screen. And in summary, the keys are very useful when you want to keep the stat preserved while modifying a collection of widgets. Keep in mind, always put the keys at the outermost stat for widgets that you want to preserve the stat for. This is because the Flutter uses keys to identify individual widgets in the widget tree. And if you only put the key to a child widget, Flutter will not be able to track the stat of the parent widget. So if you think we are talking about our first stateful widget that we have for swap, so it's not like that. Because let me show you. If you wrap this stateful widget with a container and also this one. Now if you restart the application and this time if you swap, this is generating the random numbers. So what's wrong with this? Well, let's look at the tree structure. So initially our widget tree and element tree look something like this with container added on top of the stateful number widgets having their keys inside. Now when we swap two stateful number widgets, the flutter element to widget matching algorithm looks at one level of the tree at a time. So let's focus on the first children of the column at a time. And that first level of the children, everything matches up correctly. And in the second level, the widget's key didn't match and the element connection is deactivated. Because when you use local keys in the child widget, it will not be used to match a widget to an element in the parent widget. This is because the flutter only looks for the keys that match in the same level of the widget tree. And the flutter framework did not find the stateful element at that level with that key value. As a result, when you rebuild your app, the container widget will be recreated and the unique key of the stateful number widget will be different. This is why the numbers start generating randomly when you wrap your stateful number widget with the container. And the same thing will happen for the other child. Now adding the keys to the level of the container widget, this will solve our problem. This time, as Flutter looks at one level of the tree at a time, so it's not as where is the problem. So everything works perfectly in this case and the swap happens as previously happened. Flutter has several different kind of keys that can be used according to the data we are preserving. So when you have a situation where you have a collection of widgets and you want to ensure that each widget must distinct from each other. So in that case, you can use the unique keys. We already had used the unique keys in our example application because we don't had any constant data in our widgets. Or when you are dealing with more complex combination of data, for example, in the social media feed app, each post is represented by a post object and user can like, comment and share the post. And it's important to manage the state of the individual posts and update the UI correctly. When the new posts are added, the existing posts are modified or when the feed is refreshed. So here, the object key is used to uniquely identify each post object in the feed, even if the post has same title, description, number of likes and also the other fields. The object key makes each post different from each other. Next we have the value keys. These keys are useful when the identity of the object is not based on the memory reference like the object key but instead the attribute or the property. 
For example, in the to-do app, let's say we want the text of to-do item must be unique and different from others. So here we can use the value key because the text is a value an attribute of the to-do object. And next, the page storage keys are the special kind of keys that are used to persist the scroll of a scrollable views like grid view, list view, custom scroll views, etc. Next, we have the global keys. The global keys allow us to access the state and the properties of a specific widget from anywhere in our application, not just its parent, such as in cases of form validation or managing the state in the complex widget tree, we need a global key. For example, when you want to perform form validation and display error messages for each field. To achieve this, we will use a global key to access the form state and validate fields from different parts of the app. So in summary of the keys, the using of keys of different types depends upon the specific situation. For example, if you want to uniquely identify a widget and preserve its stat, use a unique key. And if you want to uniquely identify a widget based on the object identity, you can use the object key. And if you want to uniquely identify a widget based on its value, you can use a value key. And if you want to uniquely identify a widget globally, you can use a global key. And also you can use the page storage key for persisting the scroll location of the scrollable views in Flutter. So that was all about the keys. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section. And for more information on keys, head on over to flutter.dev.